what I want. I'll be right with you. Hold on. Yep, no problem. I hadn't gotten a chance to print my agenda, so I was just took notes on it on my side here. All right, here we go. All right. Hi, this is Melinda. I'm sorry, I'm late. Hello. Hello, Melinda. Should, uh, let's see, who's here that we don't know? So there's just- Yeah, what, you wanna go young. around? Wanna yeah, go around I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, so Peter, I'll, I'll call the names because I don't think everybody's in the same order on yep. everybody's screen. So Peter, okay. you wanna tell everybody who you are? Sure, uh, Peter Gillespie, uh, uh, town planner for the town of Wethersfield, staff to the commission. And I'm Katie Sullivan. I'm uh, assistant chair, I guess. And um, I work at the Webb Dean Stevens Museum. And that's good, Carol. Um, I'm a member of the Heritage Commission. Okay, Joshua, do you wanna introduce yourself or shall I introduce you? Uh, no, I can. Thanks, Katie. <laughs> okay. Uh, my name is Joshua Torrance. I'm the new executive director at the Webb Dean Stevens Museum and a proud resident of Wethersfield. Yay. Oh. Julie, can you unmute and introduce yourself? Yep. I'm Julie Lemos. Um, I am a member of the Heritage Commission, a resident in town. Obviously, I'm a, a realtor and a member of the chamber, which I think is the function that I'm serving on this commission. <laughs> Dawn. Hi, I'm Dawn Guide. I'm the recording secretary. All right, Jesse, you're muted. Hi, how you doing? I'm Jesse Smith. I am a website and social media manager for Historic Wethersfield. And uh, just to warn you, I do have a one-year-old running around right now, so <laughs> I get a little noisy at times. So I'll be on mute quite a lot. All right, Amy. I'm Amy Woodorf. I'm the executive director of Weathersfield Historical Society. All right, Deborah. Hi, I'm Deborah Raymond. I'm the executive director for the Weathersfield Chamber of Commerce and a lifelong resident of Weathersfield. Yay, same here. Gary? Gary, did you want to introduce yourself? There you go. Yeah, new button wouldn't uh, unclick for me. Uh, Gary <laughs> Evans, town manager, town of Weathersfield. Okay, Jill. Hi, I'm Jill Fletcher. I'm with the Weathersfield Historical Society, a at least 30 year resident, and I also um, serve with the chamber. All right, Paul, should we have Paul introduce himself? Yes. Hi, Hello. everyone. Uh, Paul Young, uh, Weathersfield High, class of 1971. I lived over on Lexington Street, up behind Hughes Brothers back in the day. And I represent Juice Bar Electric Vehicle Charging Stations, a Connecticut manufacturer of EV charging. All right, thank you for being here. Betty. Hi, um, if you don't mind, I'm not gonna turn on my video. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I'm trying to, I, I'm in the process of cleaning up my little office space and it's a complete disaster in here. So <laughs> I don't wanna share that with everybody. <laughs> you don't mind. Um, yes, so I am the um, program director at Weathersfield Academy for the Arts. And um, yeah, this is a great group. So happy to All be here. Right. All right, Charlie, Charlie Ford. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Charlie Ford, a representative from the Weathersfield Shopkeepers Association and, and uh, one of the founding members of that association in 1976. There you go, Melinda. Uh, thank you, Melinda Robito. I'm a resident here in the town of Wethersfield. I also have a small business, Circa Antiques and Collectibles, and I'm a member of the Old Wethersfield Shopkeepers Association and the Heritage Commission. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone. So our first order would be approval of the... Oh, the first order would be handing it off to Chris Trazik. Would you like to introduce yourself, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> Please don't do that. I literally jumped from, okay. from one call to another call. All I right. don't even have the agenda up yet. All right. Well, at least it's introduce yourself. All right. At least so introduce yourself. Days. Hi, I'm Chris Trazik. I'm chair of the Heritage Commission. And apologies for being late. Um, and I'm all the things she's a chair of. Yeah. I'm what? 
we should list all the things that you're. That yeah, you're unfortunately, there's yeah. a time limit on this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you take a breather, and I will ask uh, about approval of the minutes. Do we have a motion? So moved. Okay, second. Second. Okay, nobody's awake today. Um, any corrections, additions, deletions, anything? No? All right, so can I have uh, a vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, so the minutes are approved. And I guess we are going to begin with uh, Mr. Young and the EV station. Oh, where'd he go? There he is. He keeps jumping around. There you go. Hi, Paul. Are we ready for your presentation? Uh, yes, and it's going to be verbal. Um, I, Peter approached. Uh, uh, me over at Juice Bar and had noticed that we installed some EV charging stations at the Borden, brand new um, residential community on the Silas Dean Highway. Mentioned that the historical, uh, this group was interested in adding EV charging as an amenity. And I said, wow, that's fantastic. I grew up in Wethersfield. So, uh, I mean, that is effectively what we are up to. I, I provided a price quote for a dual EV charging station for that purpose. And it would uh, be universal station. Uh, any electric vehicle can charge at it. There would be a certain amount of installation costs that Peter said he could work through, uh, if I'm not mistaken, with the uh, folks from the town to go ahead and do the, the bolting down and wiring of it, uh, put some really good pricing together, and the units themselves are brandable. So we were going to and are going to include the uh, logo. Hopefully it's the Weathersfield Town logo or any kind of branding that you want to put on there. It, it accepts a... 3M skin, so you can really dress it up nicely. The little bit about uh, the company that I represent, we are a 13-year-old EV charging station manufacturer based right here in Connecticut, originally owned by the uh, Schmidt brothers who own ProPark. They're a parking asset ownership and management company based in Hartford. Uh, no longer. We're now owned by two gentlemen from Westport, Connecticut, uh, and headquarters is in Norwalk now. We manufacture the stations in Oxford, and my office is over in East Hartford right now. Wish it was in Old Weathersfield, but <laughs> we're in, over in East Hartford. And that is, uh, that's, that's the story about the EV charging station. If you have a chance, stop through, drive through the Borden and uh, take a look at one. That is exactly what we're proposing for this group. Hope you choose us. Any questions, questions from anyone? No? Paul, what do you what do you estimate the uh, install, the additional install uh, cost might be? Well, just a ballpark it's, figure. Sure, it's, it's really all about the trenching because I know it's going to be an outdoor surface lot. So it's, it's really the trenching from the power source over to the station. And we actually have a precast concrete base that can be utilized. And I would suggest that that is used. You'd simply use a uh, same kind of a auger that you would uh, drill a hole for like a telephone pole or a sign pole. And you drop that cement in there, run the conduit out from the power panel bolt the station down and pull that wire through and turn it on. You're ready to go. Great. Um, when I, but when I, it... I didn't, I didn't give you a number. So I <laughs> usually tell people anywhere between 800 to two grand is an average for installation cost. Okay. okay. I have a question. Um, well, two questions. The first one is how many of these units have you 
um, manufactured and have installed now? The, the whole company, do you know, like how many are out there? Yeah, just under 1,000 across the country. So not the biggest, but the most uh, heavy duty premium EV station. I'm just as a, for instance, they're made out of aluminum. So the enclosure is all aluminum, pedestal, stainless steel. Um, I, it's amazing. I was uh, at a, I'm on my way back from New York and New Jersey today, but I was at a client's facility in Jersey City, and their other building is down in the District of Columbia. They have one of the original juice bars. They are still 10 years old, still running. They have a couple of the second generation, and now they're adding three of the third generation units. So that's just an example of the longevity of the product. Well, that leads to my second question, which is, you know, the car technology is changing all the time. So if there's some huge innovation, uh, will this thing be outdated soon? Or how do you deal with that? Um, no, that's software upgrades that, that's done remotely. And if there actually is a hardware component that's needed to be replaced, you can simply open up the face of the unit and add parts as needed. And I'll, I'll go back to the fact that we have a 10 year old unit still up and running, charging all the new cars right now, um, actually all over the country. A lot of the originals are running still. So this is um, one charging station that will charge two cars? Yes. And it will charge um, any electric, including the Tesla? Tesla, right down to that little plug-in Prius with the, uh, the hybrid car and everything in between. Um, it's important that I mention that a Tesla uses an adapter to okay. charge on a universal charging station, and that's, that comes with their car. The, the reason why they have that proprietary connector is that way they can, and only they can use those high-speed Tesla stations you see out along the highways. Right. Will you be part of any um, net online network that people can find us um, if they're yes. traveling through the state? Yes, definitely. You get on all the maps and the, the soft... We are software agnostic, so we offer several different software companies. That's a good thing about us. You're not stuck with one software network, but the one, the specific one that we use is called AmpUp. That's our preferred provider right now. And the first thing that they do is get you posted on all of the maps so the cars will find their way to, to you and utilize the station and dine in the local restaurants and so on. That's what we're hoping. Yep. They're like bird feeders. <laughs> so, P Peter, where exactly is this charger going? On so we, we, we were thinking of uh, putting it in the, in the Keeney Center parking lots. So if you come into the parking lot from Main Street, uh, all the way to the left of the parking lot in that corner, because that's the closest point to the uh, utility connections to the building to to dig the trench and to connect the station up. And there'd be some kind of sign on the street at the street to tell yeah, we'd you. Have to, we'd have to figure out those details. The beauty of these stations, as was just mentioned, there is a uh, a map uh, out there uh, on the internet for um, users, uh, so they know exactly where these are located. So. Um, Signage certainly would be helpful as well, but most people, when they are looking for it, go to the, the online resource and right. you know, get the location figured out. Um, I have a question. Um, during the lifetime of these, how much maintenance is normally required? And um, do we rely on your company for that? Sure. There is actually not a lot of maintenance required. Typically, if something's going to go wrong, it happens during the shipment on its way to you, or someone may damage the connector. For instance, if it's left on the ground or um, abused in some way or another, and the, the connector can be easily repaired, and the actual cords themselves, they are 18 feet long, they can be replaced if the worst thing happened and 
the cord was damaged. And yes, the repair work can be coordinated through us. Typically, we use the electricians that installed it. In this case, it would be, I think it's going to be the town team, and they certainly are capable of replacing the parts internally or a local contractor. For instance, we utilize Bloomfield Electric over in Glastonbury. They're, they've been doing a lot of work for us locally. Thank you. What do you find is the incidence of vandalism uh, of these units? Almost nothing, and I'm really surprised. I mean, uh, just we've got them all around Hartford at the Spruce Street train station uh, right there on Union Place, <clears throat> uh, right behind uh, Hartford City Hall, across from the old Hartford Times building, the Yukon and just out there on the street and, and not even any graffiti on them yet. But I will say up in Springfield, uh, just behind Monarch Place, just this year, we placed a juice bar on a surface lot over by kind of like the restaurant district over there. Mm -hmm. The Somebody has graffitied the back of it. <laughs> and that's the first time. I've been doing this for 10 years now. It's the first time I've seen one get the spray paint job and it happened in Springfield. Well, that's good to hear. <laughs> yeah, not a lot of that, which is a good thing. Other questions, anyone? Are we good? Well, thank you, Paul, for sharing everything with us. We appreciate the time. Oh, you're welcome. And I'm, I'm really excited to do a branded version of one to share with, with the team on this call. So I, I know, Peter, if you could get a just kind of a, a high res logo, our design people can uh, dress up a, a rendering just to kind of share by email, whatever, with your team. We can do that. Great. Okay, well, thanks for having me. I'll let you get back to the rest of the meeting. I know you've got a full agenda and take care, stay healthy, everyone. Okay, thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Chris, you wanna take over? Or you want me to keep going? Um, I can take over. I just had okay. one question for Peter and that was, cause I don't remember. I have a sieve for a brain these days. Um, where were we gonna pay for this, Peter? <laughs> <laughs> You, you would have to bring that up, wouldn't you? It was all going so well. <laughs> you notice well, I waited till Paul got off before I asked the question. <laughs> well, he, he knows we don't have any money uh, uh, just yet, but um, okay. the, the price of 6,000 and change um, is uh, much more appealing than the previous proposal mm -hmm. that we talked yeah. about. He did, he did provide us with a discount. Uh, we'll still have to go through some purchasing you know, process and comply, comply with our ordinances. But nevertheless, I think um, we had talked at the last meeting about maybe doing a sustainable CT matching yep. uh, request. Uh, there would have to be some crowd crowdfunding or community yep. match. They, they have you. very specific requirements about that. So, um, so we would have to figure out that one in order to do that. Or we would have to go after some other uh, source of funding. There was some recent news. There was some news today in Hartford Business Journal that the Volkswagen emissions settlement provided, I think it was $58 million in funding to Connecticut DEP. And Ooh. they are discussing uh, how that would be rolled out. There's also some effort at Eversource to potentially come up with a program to fund uh, EV charging stations. So there might be some resources that are otherwise not available now that are potentially going to become available um, at some point in the near future. So there's a couple of options potentially out there to do this. Okay, all right. But we don't wanna to wait too long either because we also don't wanna lose the great price because that is a really good price Yeah. yeah. to be yeah. able to do that. So um, do we wanna look at the, the Connecticut? We can apply for the sustainable Connecticut anytime, correct? Yes, that's kind of a rolling thing. So um, I think the first step is to reach out to them and express an interest in doing that and then work out uh, the details as to uh, following their formula as to how to come up with the matching funds. So um, 
so that maybe we could have an offline meeting if there's a group of us who want to work on that to uh, pursue that. Otherwise, we since we have the town manager on the call, maybe the town manager in his graces as we get towards the uh, year end has some resources that uh, the town can come up with. Not to put you on the spot or anything like that. Peter, how many do you expect to put in Weathersfield initially? I think just we were just one. we were just starting with baby steps and and looking at this one installation. However, okay. I think um, uh, the town manager, you know, is interested. He's on the he's on the call to potentially consider doing this at other public locations, such as town hall, maybe some of the schools. You know, it, it's the kind of thing that um, you know the the supply of stations uh, is so low in comparison to not only how many vehicles are on the road now, but how many are projected to be on the road in the next just few years. So I think yeah. we really need to uh, get ahead of that uh, as much as we can and, and figure out a strategy uh, yep. to do this on a, on a bigger scale. Yep. And with COVID uh, kind of winding down a little bit, I think people are gonna be anxious to get out and visit Weatherstone. Yep. And it really, like I, I shared before, but I have an EV and it really did get me off the highway to go somewhere to charge. And then I had to find a place to have lunch because it doesn't charge in two seconds. So, you know, once people plug in and then go looking, I think it's it's going to be a real plus for us. Yeah. So Gary, I see you unmuted. So you have comments? Yeah, I just uh, to piggyback on Pete and I'll go upstairs later and throw stuff at him. But we've been having <laughs> conversations uh, along the way. Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't have a dollar amount to associate with it, but it is of interest, not only to me, but it's been a discussion kind of with the uh, council, different councils in terms of how this evolves in terms of not only a, uh, a need for the environment, but an economic development driver for the community. Um, and right. the reality is that there's probably several key locations within town, and that's what Peter was alluding to. And there probably is a funding strategy that needs to go in line as to where the locations uh, should be. Um, and kind of an analysis of what each cost mm -hmm. would be associated with that location, and that might help drive it, which, you know, frankly, should be probably part of a capital improvement plan strategy, a five-year plan, um, or integrated within the five-year plan. Um, I, I don't have a dollar amount right now. We are in the middle of budget season, um, so it, it is something that could be potentially discussed as a capital project, not so much for this year, but, a, you know, if the investments are minor in comparison, right? The equipment is, seems to be affordable. It's the trenching and getting the power supply in. And then we have to work out some details related to who pays for what, you know, is it a, is the town paying for the utility or are people swiping a credit card? What, what are the protections? So we, we've been having the conversation. That being said, I don't have a dollar amount or an allocation available for you um, as of February of 2021. Right. Um, so Peter, just quickly before we get off this, in his proposal, was he providing one where it's not free that whoever uses it have to, has to pay for it? I didn't see the uh, components for the um, you know, credit card charging. So it, that's probably a follow-up question I have to pose to him as to how that works with his particular product. Right. Um, this is a, a, a fast, a quick charging station. I think it charges uh, a vehicle in 45 minutes, which is nice. Uh, yeah. so, you, so you can get some turnover and people aren't there, you know, for six hours. So, but I will follow up Thanks. with them to, to better understand that. Okay. One other right. thing too, if, if people are paying for it, is there any uh, token amount that comes back to the town or to uh, whatever um, as part of that payment? Good question. Yeah, we'll have to, we'll follow up with him on that. Okay. Um, so if anyone is interested in maybe working with Peter on this in terms of the Sustainable Connecticut grant and maybe working on crowdfunding or the rest of it, can you reach out to Peter directly and let him know you're willing to work on it? And Betty, I'm going to particularly highlight you since you originally brought this up. <laughs> Peter, <laughs> I'm calling you. <laughs> I would think the shopkeepers too would want to, you know, be part of this yep. conversation. So maybe Melinda can recruit one of the shopkeeper members to 
be at the table as well. And, yeah, that makes sense. Just one last question for me anyway. Um, if you put in more than one, is there any discount or right now is it just for each one is the same amount of money? I would think that if, um, you know, there would certainly be an economy of scale and a volume, you know, if we were talking to them about doing this across the community, I would imagine the numbers per unit would certainly come down. But obviously I can't, I can't speak for, for him as to what, what kind of economies of scale right. we would have to be talking about, but I'm sure there is. Good. Katie, since you have an EV, do you, do you normally pay for the charge when you're on the road? Um, the, we have had mostly, we've been having free charging. Um, we stopped one time at a Nissan dealership, so it's free there. We one time went somewhere where we wanted to pay and it wasn't working. So we've been lucky enough to hit hit up the free places, but um, you know we're more than willing to. When you get down to it and you see it ticking down, you're more than happy to pay if you have to to charge it up. Yeah. So you think normally it's it's a pay per charge? I'm not think. sure what's average. Betty, what have you found? Um, I use ChargePoint and EV Charger, which are both free. Okay. Thank God. Um, yeah. Yeah, but um, what was I going to say? The, I think that um, when you come into a place, when you find it online, you um, automatically, you, you will know which ones do um, charge. Um, I think that the ones that are inside parking garages sometimes charge because of, you know, the parking garage. But um, yeah, and... Um, what I learned from one of those um, DEP things, seminars was um, they're like Hartford, the Hartford in Hart, uh, the insurance company, um, they're really big. They have like eight of them. And there's a lot of people with electric cars that work for that company. Mm -hmm. And they have a time limit of, you know, like half an hour, 45 minutes. And then they know, and so these cars are all lined up when all these people come into work, they're all lined up. Um, to be charged and when somebody reaches half an hour 45 minutes they somehow ping the person in whatever department they're in that their car is done they have to come down and move it and they ping the next person and they all move up wow yeah so um, that's a question we need to ask Paul yeah. if there is such a thing as a timing device yeah I mean obviously um, free is better you know if, if you're oh, going to yeah, have a choice right. you're going to look for the free one Right. But if you if somebody wants to put in their phone number or whatever to be pinged for when the, right. the car is done, if they're eating or somewhere or, you know, whatever, shopping, um, and they come back and move the car in the position. But we don't want them to be pinged. I was, we I was just going to say it. that. Yeah. Well, we no, no. The, the point is that the, the person who has already a half hour's worth of um, charge has to move their car so the next person can come in right right yes yeah so well, let's peter, hope we get that many <laughs> yeah and peter while you're asking questions i guess it would be helpful to know what the average cost if they do it if they charge for it what that average cost is to charge yep. your car so Okay, moving on visitor map and kiosks uh connecticut humanities quick grant we uh, filed the grant. Um, they indicated that the decision will be made the first week of March, which is next week. So next week, we're expecting uh, a decision on the uh, grant request. Just to refresh everyone's memory, the, uh, the, part, the two partners are Trinity Church and the Great Meadow Conservation Trust. Um, and to a certain extent, the shopkeepers, as we put together the, the business map, so um, if we get notified next week, we will hit the ground running. We have nine months to implement the projects. Uh, the grant kind of spells out how we're gonna do that. So uh, we are in a waiting mode and hopefully uh, next week we will get a decision on that. And the grant just to re remind everybody was $4,999. 
So, yay! Yay! <laughs> Don't don't applaud don't applaud yet. We didn't we didn't get the money. So. Yeah, you'll put the no, but we at least it. got the application in. So you know, baby steps, baby there steps. <laughs> um, and so I since I was late to the meeting, I apologize. But several of you are new members, so welcome aboard. Glad to have you, um, Peter. All of the appointments have now been made for the Heritage Commission. No, Chris, you're getting ahead of yourself here. Let's not be. Uh... Oh, sorry. You're aiming, you're aiming too high. That couldn't possibly have happened. So I, well, unless I, let me, I'll, I'll tell you who I got letters for. And if anyone else got a letter above and beyond this, then uh, please let me know so I can keep my record straight. But um, in terms of membership, uh, this was the February 1st council meeting. Uh, the historic district commission appointee is uh, Damian Craigu from 493 Main Street. Uh, the EDIC, appointment was Judy Keene. The uh, shopkeeper's appointment was Melinda Robidoux. The um, Historical Society was uh, Amy Widorf and Jill Fletcher as the designee. The Web Dean Stevens was um, Joshua Torrance and Katie Sullivan as the designee. The, let's see, Chris Trazic appointment was as a resident of Weathersfield. Mm -hmm. And those are the letters I have in my possession. So if anyone else got a letter um, appointing you, please uh, let me know and share that with me. So there are, by my account, several slots that we still need appointments for. And that would include a Chamber of Commerce representative and I think Julie was trying to fill that slot. I yep. had given them that name, but I'm not sure what happened there. Um, we also need a resident of uh, the uh, historic district. We need a Silas Dean Highway business representative. We need a representative of the business community that is not involved in retail. And then I think that was it. We have that weird representative of town government staff, which is either myself, maybe Jesse, but I think we were going to work on changing that to something else. Right. Um, so that's, that's the status that I have. Okay. And we had names for everything except the business on Silas Dean, correct? I'm not sure if we had the resident of the historic district, unless we were putting uh, Carol Bruce. Judy Phil's we Judy, were putting Carol Judy, Bruce. Yeah, Carol Bruce. Okay. Old Weathersfield, right? Yeah, yeah. Her resident. And Peter, how about Gabe? Is it Gabe D'Amica um, on the Salestine project? Uh, he he's a, a business owner on Salestine. I think he wants to focus on the the Silestine Highway project through EDIC rather than being involved in the. I could certainly ask him, but I would. I think he might not. He might not be the, the fit. Yeah. And we had been thinking about Cove Deli. Mm -hmm. Yes, Cove, for the business uh -huh. community, yeah. not retail. That would yeah. be a good one. Okay. Right. So. All right, so that's, that's where we're at. Well, at least we've made progress considering that we've gone nowhere in two years. So we've gotten yeah. Almost halfway there, so that's a good thing. Okay. <laughs> All right, so restaurant uh, brochure promotion. Peter, you forwarded out to everyone, correct? Mm -hmm. The two brochures that um, CTM had sent for the diners and tacos. Yes. Right. <clears throat> so we, we did talk about this at the EDIC meeting. Mm -hmm. They had kind of mixed mixed feelings. They really, um, obviously as the town economic development commission, they want us to focus our efforts on town uh, businesses, but at the same time, they also saw the value in having, a, having an expanded version of that. So they wanted me to prioritize my time to start with something local and then uh, work with the other communities to do a broader thing, which understandably would take some time, but they wanted to do something initially to promote Weathersfield restaurants and food providers, and then see where the conversation goes with the other communities um, and uh, come back with a proposal. 
figure out what those costs might be and discuss it at a future meeting. Okay. We had also talked about including the health district since that would include all four of the towns in one. Um, I still think it's worth pursuing doing all four of them. I'm not sure we would have enough on our own to create a full brochure. You'd be surprised how many um, yeah. restaurants there are. If, you, um, if you're curious, go to the Historic Weathersfield website. We have a, uh, a listing of places to eat and it's, um, it's pretty substantial. So um, when you line them all up and add them all up, um, we could easily fill a brochure if we included everybody. Um, the problem will be adding the three other towns would be a very substantial brochure yeah. and we'd have to right. figure out well, we, were, we were thinking of making it like a theme brochure and then maybe right. later on do a different theme. So like the Mexican restaurants and in the first last, and it could be small. Those, that one, you, the ones that you passed out, Peter, were quite large and would take you all day just to go through. <laughs> but they were also themed, Judy, when you think about it, because they were taco they places were and diners. Yeah. They were, but that was a lot of uh, restaurants in each theme, yeah. Yeah, I think the issue with doing, I mean, if so if we do it local, it, would we be looking to CTM to actually produce the brochure? Because they can do it for pennies on the dollar compared to anybody else. The, the local version that we were thinking about doing would just be a simple eight and a half by 11 window display with a QR code that takes you to our already existing listing with a logo, um, okay. with a logo for our shops local program, maybe the logo for the Chamber of Commerce, and a QR code so that people can see. It. And, and the heading might be "Eat Local" or "Eat," you know, something short and sweet, uh, just to catch your eye. And then uh, those of you who have your phone with you, just go to that, and it brings you right to our already existing uh, directory. So it would be very little effort, very little cost. Uh, and we would get the uh, message out there very easily and very quickly to support Weathersfield businesses um, without going through a whole printing of a brochure, which is usually already outdated by the time you put it together because things change literally every month. So we would start with something you know short and sweet, very quick, and then strategize as to how to do the, uh, the bigger and more impressive effort, particularly if we're going to go into the umbrella of the Central Connecticut Health District and then the three other towns. Coordinating that will be a bit of a project on its own. So we wanted to start out with a very simple approach and then uh, expand it from there. Um, can I just say, I, I have to leave early, so I apologize, but I just wanted to say two things on that. Um, one is the, you know, the QR codes are really back in trending. They're trending now big time. So. I, I, I personally really like that idea. I did reach out to the town of Rocky Hill and actually got crickets on it. Um, not sure why, but uh, I told Peter I'd try again on that. Uh, Newington has some new leadership coming in. So uh, I spoke to that person today and uh, she'll work on that. But um, so I just wanted to pass that along before I had to hang up. Deb, okay. when you said the town of Rocky Hill, did you mean the chamber or did you mean the town? Chamber. Okay. All right. I talked to the town and, and got good feedback. So I just wanted to oh, clarify it to make sure we're not talking to the talking yeah. cross purposes. I, I reached out twice to the uh, president of the chamber and the ED and got nothing. Okay. Okay. All right. So Peter, um, I'm just gonna ask you what are your thoughts and preference? So I, I, I think the starting off, you know, with this, with the small effort, uh, producing something with a QR code and having a listing, you know, to a link that we already have uh, is kind of a no brainer, low hanging fruit uh, to start this. And then, um, because we'll need to get, if we're gonna do a brochure, we'll need to get pricing. We'll have to get, you know, costs for designing. Uh, we're to figure out a maintenance plan. Uh, and then if we branch out to the other uh, three towns, uh, I can't imagine how long that might take to get everybody on right. the same page. So that's kind of uncharted territory for us. I certainly think it's a great idea to do that on a, on a, on a health district basis, but um, 
we could spend literally months and months and, and have nothing to show for it if we don't do something you know, quick and immediately uh, and support our local businesses first. So okay. that's kind of my- Where, where are you um, envisioning the signs being put up other than on Main Street? Uh, we, would, we would send it out to all restaurants on our list mm -hmm. and hopefully all of them would put it in their windows to cross promote each other. Okay. So Obviously you would mail you would mail a card to them or email? How would it happen? It, it could be a simple email with a PDF pre-printed for them. And all they've got to do is print it out on their local computer and stick it in the window. Uh, we could certainly also go around with a bunch of printed ones and hand them to people. So I, I think there's a couple of different approaches. Okay. So my question is, why would a restaurant put that in their window to advertise for the rest of the restaurants in town. Yeah, that was my thinking. They know the other restaurants are doing the same for them and might not even know that they exist. So, um, you know, there's a certain sense of, you know, we're all in this together, I would hope anyway, if I'm in, I'm in the business community. Um, I, 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 I would imagine they would. I mean, you can't force people to do it. It's a freebie, they're not paying for it, but. Uh, in the spirit of supporting the local business community, um, at least I would think that, you know, they would have that same same thought process. Can it go on our on the town website in the EDIC folder or whatever? Yeah, definitely. It, it would certainly go on the website once we produce it. Um, but I was thinking getting it out there to all of the restaurants is really the the approach that we should focus on. And then Jesse could include it on the newsletters that go out on a, like every couple of months, just say, don't forget this QR code that brings you to all the restaurants in town. But I have some concerns about the, the eight and a half by 11 flyers work locally, but that doesn't help when you're talking about bringing people in from outside, which the brochures that CTM distributes does do. So I don't want to lose sight of the fact that that's another way to bring people in mm -hmm. um, is with that brochure. But I understand it makes sense to do something quick and easy. So, okay. Other thoughts on that? Nope, sounds good. Okay, all right. Promo video, Peter. The only thing I have to report, I did not get a chance to call the guy in Plainville. Was that where he was from? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, we had been talking to NBC TV. They had approached us about producing some uh, videos, but they ultimately wanted us to enter into a commercial contract mm -hmm. with them so that those um, videos would be, in essence, used as commercials on NBC TV. So once we... Uh, expressed uh, a lack of interest in buying the commercials, their interest in helping promote and produce the videos went away. So they are no longer uh, in conversations with us. So we, we have moved on. I know the town manager had been approached by companies that actually do this. Uh, they, they get their income by incorporating advertisement of local businesses in the promotional pieces. Um, so we have some numbers. I'm waiting to, to get those from him. And, um, but I, that's really all I have to, have to share. I haven't had a lot of time to spend on this one. Okay. All right. And I don't know if it's a, a super high priority. Right. Um, but all right, let's just keep us informed then as we go forward. Um, all right. Anything else under old business? No. Okay. Moving into new business, certified local governments. Peter, I think that was supposed to be you and me. Well, we're still waiting for the uh, SHPO office to send us- Oh, the information. The information so that we could start the conversation with the Historic District Commission. So um, I'll try one more time and see if we can track down that information, but that kind of starts the ball rolling for us so we understand what level of detail we need in order to get the application put together. Okay. Okay. All right. And on the CC, CCG projects, it's so hard to say that. Um, Peter, in the interest of time, because it's 550, um, any new information um, as opposed to just kind of reiterating what you've told us in the past, but any new information on any of those projects? In, in an effort to move this project along, we have scheduled a public information meeting on March 24th. So that uh, will give the engineering department 
kind of a timeline to get uh, some of the loose ends moving forward. So um, March 24th, sometime in the evening, we'll, we'll keep you posted. There'll be, there'll be more information about that once we get closer to the date. Okay. All right, great. Um, 21, 22 budget. So I know Gary was talking earlier that this is budget season. Um, so I, I emailed out today. Yeah. Uh, for those of you, um, it's almost identical to last year's budget, except we've added a line item um, to have a recording secretary prepare minutes. Yep. Several years ago, we tried that and it was it was rejected. So we're going back uh, with that request. So instead of an, a $28,100 budget, it's $29,100. Okay. And do we think there are gonna be issues with the budget this year, given everything that's been going on? Uh, there are issues every year with the budget. Uh, this would be this would be no surprise. Okay. I just don't I don't know what the there's no message or directive to cut the budget or keep it level. So um, we'll start with this. The, the only thing I would ask in terms of um, prioritization, if there's something on here, and we were required to cut the budget, which of these line items would you uh, offer up first? or be willing to offer up if we had to cut? I think, cause we are talking about doing more social media advertising and less print advertising. I think there could be wiggle room in the ad budget. Okay. How do other people feel? I was thinking that also. Okay. Any other thoughts on the budget? Okay. Uh, where's my, go back to my agenda. Okay, uh, annual report. I owe that Peter, so we can bring that before council. Um, so I did, I did provide in your packet uh, the planning and economic development uh, report. So Chris, a lot of the statistics that you are in there. are in there. Uh, Jesse and I went back and forth. Uh, with some of those, and there's a lot of heritage tourism related items in there. So I think you can probably simply just do a, a bit of a cut and paste. Yep. Um, and um, we won't have to do much more than that. Okay, which is what I've done every year. <laughs> <laughs> and just a shorty, and do you think we need to present to council in person? I don't think so. I think we, okay. can, we can submit it just for uh, informational purposes. Um, I had written this report and provided to them. They didn't request a presentation. So we'll submit it to them for the record to, to meet your, uh, your annual report obligation. Okay, great. And Julie, send that um, production company information to Peter. Yeah, we will do. For the video, Julie just made a note that they just had one done. So, okay. um, and if other people have suggestions, send those along too. So great. Okay, Bicycles on Main, there is a meeting this Thursday was last Thursday? March 4th. Oh, March 4th. There was a meeting, there's a follow-up meeting on March 4th to get into the, get into the details about the event. So just to, uh, Melinda's on the phone. I think Charlie was also at the meeting, but uh, it, they wanted to do a, they're viewing this as a spring version of the Scarecrows on Main where right. they would get uh, probably a lot of the similar same people who did the scarecrows to decorate. Exactly. Yeah. Of so Melinda, you want to pipe? Yeah. Melinda, what do you want to fill us in? Yeah, yes. So, so we're looking at it as being exactly like the scarecrows on Maine. Um, we, we saw a lot of traffic, foot traffic in Old Weathersfield. It was tremendous this past October for shopkeepers I actually had a better October than December. Um, mm -hmm. it, it was amazing. So I'm very excited to know that there's, if we put this out there, we'll have a lot of people coming and we've already started to talk about it um, with customers and the community is excited about it. Cool. All right. So I do think the one issue would be the actual securing the bicycles. Yeah. So they don't disappear. <laughs> Yes, that was, dis that was discussed. Yeah. 
So, all right, so keep us informed, Melinda. And I know there are several members of the commission who have already volunteered to help um, with it. And if they weren't at the last meeting, hopefully they'll be at the next one. Um, but I do think it's a great idea. It's another way to get people around. And yeah, I, the scarecrows were amazing last year. Yeah, they were. Absolutely amazing. And the number of people, I mean, people from all over Connecticut were going, hey, did you see the scarecrows? You should make a trip. It's great. So hopefully we this had, will be. Yeah, it, it, we had a lot of people from out of state coming in. Yeah. That's great. Well, it was I think a good it was outdoor a good, thing. It was a good COVID activity. Yep. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. And we got so many scarecrows because everybody was cooped up and didn't know what else to do That's with their right. time. So they all made scarecrows. Well, and I think it re-energized the interest in it and people who hadn't done it before. We know this is fun. So I think you're going to continue to have good interest and good entries because of that. Mm. So, right. Yeah. It'll be great for the photo contest too. <laughs> Bikes and scarecrows. <laughs> <laughs> we can very, get very to the true. calendar. Yeah. Scarecrows. Hi there. Hi, Carol. Okay, so um, I think we are up to any other new business. Okay, Judy, Chris, you want to give us? Chris, Chris, the only other thing was I'd sent you the uh, pricing for the uh, Connecticut uh, map CTM. Yes, I was looking, I was trying to look through all my emails going, I know Peter sent another one and I missed, I, that was the one I missed. Um, I have it here if you want me to just summarize. Yeah. Can you summarize? Thank you. Sure, let me see if I can find it here in this mess of paperwork. Yeah, well, that's my problem is scrolling through all these emails. It's like, where is that thing? Um, Might still be in the printer. Hold on one sec. And I may have moved it. Um, Okay, so if you remember last year, the um, CT visit map, they ended up, we ended up uh, voting to uh, take a spot in there, but they did not produce the map because they didn't have enough interest across the state. So they are committing to do the map, uh, even if they can't get it enough uh, sponsors in Connecticut, and it would be a New England version of the map. And they mm -hmm. would double the number of uh, copies from 100,000 to 200,000. It would start in June and continue all the way through until next year in May. Uh, the rates are for a full panel, $2,500, half panel, $1,450, and a quarter panel, business card size, $775. And do you remember what size we had in the past? I think it was the half panel. That's what I, I think. I don't think we were as small as a uh, business card size. Right, and so we that, had good placement. Yes, we had. Uh, we were fortunate before in terms yeah. of that. So, um, so they are now soliciting um, businesses. I did tell them that we weren't going to do the rack card distribution um, until potentially the fall. So they've been put on notice about that. So you do have some resources available to you if uh, if you do want to spend uh, for the, the visitor's map. So, so um, if it's not a Connecticut version, it would be a New England version and would be distributed even be farther than the Connecticut map would normally be distributed. And for double the amount of time. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. so it's for $1,450 for a half panel for 12 months. I think it's a, a fairly nominal sum of money to be able to get the the word out there and be on the and I think if we respond early enough, we'll again get good placement on it. So so I have a question about that map. Um, and I don't remember seeing it, but maybe I did. Uh, is there a link on it or like you were talking about a QR code or something that when somebody gets the map, they can automatically go right to Weathersfield. So yeah, it, ha it has our website. website. It has our website okay. in the website. Ad. Okay. Yep. Okay. 
Yeah. So other and thoughts, I questions? Go ahead, Judy. I have a question about the uh, cards that are left. I think we uh, were told that there were 16,000 cards still left. Yeah. Are those continuing to go into the racks? No. They're the fall oh. rack. They're the fall rack cards, um, not the spring. So there are no spring cards printed. So they're not out there being promoted right now. And we're not under contract with them for them to do that. Our contract expired with them. But what do we do with those cards? Can we uh, act, uh, get them? I thought we talked at the last meeting about right. keeping them at the warehouse. And then uh, when we get closer to the fall, going back and discussing with them what the cost would be to distribute those 16,000. Okay, okay. Yep. Yeah. So we wouldn't buy new ones in the fall? No. We might okay. print more if you wanted to distribute more than that, but that's a that's a conversation we would have you know, later in the year. Yeah, we agreed that it didn't make any sense to spend the money on the spring rack cards and the distribution because people probably are still not gonna be traveling in the spring because you're still waiting for vaccines and the rest of it. But as the year progresses, you'll start to see a lot more travel. So that was our, that was the thinking behind our decision last month. So, okay. Um, so I need a motion to um, approve spending $1,450 to place an ad in the New England map. Um, that will be distributed in over 200,000 places and for 12 months. Judy's making that motion. I'll and second. Kate is seconding. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, raise your hands so we can see. Thank you. Aye. Everyone, everyone raise their hands and those on the phone said aye. <laughs> Are there any Sorry. opposed? <laughs> Hearing none, motion passes. Okay, we are now, any other business, Peter? So we are good with Judy, you are up for reports. Okay, um, I don't have a lot, but uh, at EDIC, we do have a, 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 a subcommittee that is looking at the Celestine Highway and how we can promote some uh, changes that will bring more uh, beauty and business to the Celestine Highway. So that's in the midst. Um, in fact, I think Friday is it that we have a meeting um, coming up, maybe not Friday. Thursday. Thursday, okay. Um, the other thing is um, uh, we talked about the uh, the brochure for the restaurants and everything. And Peter passed on all that information. It wasn't really loved, but I think it it would pass if uh, people were asked. One other thing, Unico is doing, um, Unico Eats. They are uh, offering from, and it, there's no benefit to Unico, but they're trying to promote the restaurants in town. So the first one was Vito's uh, and you paid like a prefix uh, to get a dinner. And last week, and I missed it, was uh, Village um, Prime Rib Dinner. So you have to call the day before and then you pick it up that night. And I think it was $24.95 or something. And that was right. a full meal. So where's, where's that being advertised, Judy? Because I didn't see anything about this. Yeah, I don't know. I think probably on Unicode. Chamber. Chamber, chamber yeah. that's right it was in the chamber so okay um i don't know how can we promote it further can we put it on the facebook page yeah i've got the first one i, I didn't get the one about the village okay well you know what it's um tony martino tony uh, martino yeah from edic is yeah. kind of is, is a good person i don't know if you have his email contact but he can connect you with the right person. Yeah, and, and he's the one that was announcing it when each of them was happening. So, you know, it's nice to help our restaurants out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Will he be on, at the meeting on Thursday? No, the um, Celestine meeting, no. no. Oh, that's a different, oh, he that's is, a different he meeting. He is, he'll be there, yeah. He will, okay, all right. Because there was an EDIC meeting Thursday that I, it was slash uh, website. 
social media. So I, and what time was that again? Um, I think 9.30. I've got, I've got one at 8.30 and one at 9.30. I'm trying to think which comes first, but. I think it was 9.30. is the Highway. Nine, okay, so 8.30 then I think is the social media. Oh, 8.30 is the Silas Dean. <laughs> okay, don't mind me. Okay. So I think it's okay. So good, Jesse, you can follow up with him and then see if we can get some additional postings. That would be great. Okay, all right. Anything else, Judy? No, that's it. Okay. Thank you. Great, Melinda, um, anything you wanna add in terms of shopkeepers? Uh, no, no, I think we covered it with the, the bikes on Maine. Okay, all right, terrific. Uh, Amy. You're muted. <laughs> Sorry, I'm chatting away there. Nobody can hear me. Um, <laughs> happens to all us. Everyone is enjoying our uh, Black History Month uh, programming that we have on our website and on our social media. Um, and most recently, um, we have posted a new article from the community on slavery in Weathersfield, written by Martha Smart and. Martha spent months researching this, and it is really a very powerful and very informative article. So if you haven't seen that already, I urge you to go to our website, weathersfieldhistory.org, and have a look at it. And this is laying groundwork for an exhibit we're planning for the fall, which will be Maritime Weathersfield. And uh, in that uh, exhibit, we're going to discuss Weathersfield's role in the Atlantic trade. Um, before that, we have uh, other exhibits. We have our Weathersfield women. Um, we're hoping to open up the Keeney soon so people can get in there and see this great exhibit. Um, and then uh, that will be up for a while. Then uh, August, we are going to open an exhibit that we are working on with the Keene Foundation for the 20th anniversary of 9-11. And this is going to be an amazing exhibit. Um, very powerful and it is the families of people who lost their lives on 9-11 who are working on this exhibit with us. I don't know, Judy, if you want to add anything. We are, we are so honored to be uh, participating with this. Um, so that will be August and September and then our maritime exhibit will go in after that. Um, other things we're planning on, um, we're really hoping to do our uh, Old Weathersfield Arts and Crafts Fair on October 2nd this year. Um, we've postponed all of our other fundraising events, um, uh, but hopefully we could do craft fair because it's outside. One of the things that we're going to do is hold monthly pop-up uh, events on the Keeney Lawn with three to four craft vendors. Um, we're looking at having sort of themed events once a month on a nice weekend afternoon when it's sunny and everybody's out walking, kind of to um, encourage more people to come down uh, to Old Weathersfield and also to help promote our uh, craft fair for the fall. So we're hoping to start the first one at the end of April, weather permitting. Um, we have uh, a pledge of funding for at least one Keeney cooler in July. Hopefully we'll be able to hold that and uh, we're looking for funding to have um, more concerts. Our, um, just this year, our funding from the Hartford Foundation was cut due to their uh, having to redirect funds to COVID concerns. Uh, but we'll be back up to full strength in 2022 for those. Um, so I think that's what we have going on. I don't know, Jill, if you wanna add some more things that are going on? Just things in the next couple of months, Jill, if you, if, if Amy forgot something. No, no, um, our Valentine display is still up for, um, till the end of March, if you haven't seen it. Okay. And um, I think that's it for now, thanks. Okay, terrific. Uh, and uh, Kate, I'm gonna ask Joshua to take over for Web Dean Stevens, if that's okay with you. That's actually okay. Do you guys mind if I jump off then? I have to be on another meeting. Before yep. she jumps off, she isn't telling everyone that today oh. is her birthday. 
Oh, oh, that's why you wanted me to stay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Right. So I'm actually going to a birthday party Zoom right now. So I will. Okay, go. Be have, on have a good time. Zoom. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Boy. Thanks. Well, I'll just keep it uh, fairly brief and say thanks for having me be part of this uh, commission or committee. I'm excited and I'm super excited to be a new resident, of course, of, of Weathersfield. And I can just feel the great sense of community that you all have just from this meeting. It, it makes me really excited to be part of it and uh, part of the community. So at the Webb Dean Stevens Museum, we, of course, are just finishing the new education and visitor center. Uh, we hope to be able to open. We're planning a uh, ribbon cutting and grand opening weekend, the weekend of the 4th of June. Um, we have uh, some exciting new exhibitions coming up, um, new for us to be able to do exhibitions. We're actually doing a photo exhibition on our collection of historic privies. Uh, <laughs> should be really fun. Um, and we, in our main gallery, uh, we'll be doing an exhibition on the treasures of the Webb Dean Stevens Museum collection, uh, a sort of retrospective, if you will. We have a whole host of programs and uh, lectures that we're scheming and planning for the coming year. Uh, I can say we've had a very strong, robust response to our virtual lecture series this February, Thursdays with George, and we have the last of those lectures this Thursday with bound, uh, Lives Bound Together, uh, George Washington and Slavery. Um, and that will feature Susan Schover, who is the curator at Mount Vernon. So we're really uh, excited. Our, our vision for the Web Dean Stevens is certainly to work collaboratively with our partnering organizations in this community uh, to offer uh, a more robust schedule of programs and activities uh, at the museum and to welcome people into our new, our new building uh, when it's safe and when we can. And we've uh, just really looking forward to that. So, you know, I'm happy to answer any questions, but I'll try to keep my remarks brief uh, and just say it's a pleasure to be here and a pleasure to work, by the way, with a really great team of staff members at the Webb Dean Stevens Museum. Okay, well, thank you. We are glad to have you on board and part of this commission uh, and look forward to working with you. Anyone have any questions for Joshua? Okay, then Jesse, you are up. Um, so social media is doing better. Uh, we're going up in statistics. I've uh, been doing a lot of sharing. Well, first off, there was a lot of um, events finally getting together and coming together and uh you know the uh, uh, vintage valentines um uh, the, uh what is it thursday with george um the history of three um you know there was just a lot coming from different places and i've been doing a lot of sharing i did a video um for youtube called winter in weathersfield i don't know if you've seen it yet um i would suggest watching it um, it ended up being our most popular video and brought in a lot of traffic uh, into uh, our social media. Um, it quickly uh, gained uh, very close to a, a thousand, I think, views right now. Mm -hmm. And to put that in perspective, uh, our first video that we have, the main video, um, what, did, what I forgot which one that one was called, um, but that one has a thousand views and it's been three years. So it's only been three weeks with this video and it's been like a thousand views already. So it's really uh, picking up uh, and helping out uh, each social media, Instagram, um, Facebook and YouTube itself. Uh, I've been posting more on Twitter. Um, which I told myself I would do more this year because that one I was kind of lacking on. It doesn't, I don't think it does as much as it does as the other social media um, does. Um, I'm a little worried about March. Uh, there's not much going on so far. I did 
today get something from um, Cedar Hill Cemetery. They got events for this year, finally. Um, they totally disappeared last year, you know, with everything going on. Um, and we do have uh, Art Academy um, events, um, a virtual, I think, concert and a virtual lecture, I think, is going on in March. Might be just a virtual lecture, maybe. Um, but other than that, I, there's, there's nothing. I don't have anything for, I don't know if anyone has anything in March they can give me before the newsletter comes out. Um, other than that, that's all I have. Um, Just that reminder, people can always, you know, send the stuff over to Jesse. He's really good about getting the information out there. I also just think March is one of those. It's just kind of a slow month to begin with. Yeah. You know, it's winter's winding down. Spring isn't quite here. Um, so it, it Jill, might just be said, a light month. Yeah. Uh, Jill, you said the vintage Valentine's, that's going to go through March or no. the end? No, it ends at the end of, you know, it, we're taking it down on March 1st. Um, yeah. yeah. And we're, we're still looking, watching the food that built America and seeing if we can see parts of our buildings in those shots. So stay tuned on that. Yeah, I've been uh, sharing those posts as well. Um, Thank anything, you. I, anything I can find, I just, you know, I try to share immediately. Um, the, what was it, the 15 prettiest uh yeah, oh, that was another village, good one. village or something that's doing very well and then i kind of threw in like hey watch this winter in weathersfield video with it too so um i would like to i well, what happened was i i am working on a photo contest um video for you know like maybe the best ones or something like that or my picks or i don't know but I've worked on it for a while now, and then I kind of stopped doing it and then changed paces towards the winter in Wethersfield, and which was probably the best idea. I wanted to get it out before the winter was over, and sure. that worked out great. So now I do have another, you know, I do have the photo contest video to get back to, and maybe I can do that for March. Can't we just do that as a simple kind of like Google Photos will create one and add music? So it's fairly uh, short. I could do something like that. I mean, I would have to, um, yeah, I don't know. Or just, uh, take, I don't just use... take the winners from the last few years and group those yeah. all together? Well, I was trying to actually get uh, something that wasn't with the winners. Um, to get, so, so, to, so it's the other, it's some of the other, right, it's, it's, it's everybody else that, that did not win kind of situation yep. and, and we'll throw the, I have thrown the winners in there and stuff like that, you know, some of the winners and some, I haven't included at all. And then I'm, I'm trying to go through the seasons with it and, uh, just get a good look at Weathersfield through different people's eyes kind of in a situation like that. But also I want to give them, you know, uh, credit credit for it and stuff like that because uh it might bring them back to do to do this more often right. and so okay. i got you all right can i, I ask just a question yeah. i don't know just okay. a question yes. uh, on sunday there was a two some who were by the Solomon wells house and they had a display that they had printed off of the uh, site and they were walking around, wanted to know where the cemetery was for the prison and the rest of that. We have so many walkers. March might be a great time to emphasize the walk that we have. Is there yeah. something yeah. you could do to sort of say, like, I, no? I do have, I did over the summer come up with a, a heritage walk video and I can just start re-promoting that by, by, you know, posting it again and again and again, try to get it back out there. Um, so yeah. Jesse, whilst Carol brought that up, um, geocaching might have done the Heritage Walk as an adventure lab. That's an app you can do on your phone. I will check and if it is, I'll send it to you and you can just promote it. It's kind of okay. fun. You go and answer questions and you know you do it in, you have to find five things. It's a quickie to do, but it's a fun activity. Okay. Um, so I'm pretty sure somebody posted that. 
And I was like, oh, I already know the walk. I don't need to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, because they had a geocaching event at the Cove and people were doing the adventure lab. Oh, nice. And there's one at Cedar Hill Cemetery as well. So actually okay. that's two adventure labs that are in town that you could promote at different times. So, okay. yes, I found the guy who invented anesthesia. It was very cool. <laughs> at Cedar Hill Cemetery, yeah. Wow. Um, and Jesse, maybe you could uh, work with the bike committee, the bike ped committee, because mm -hmm. Um, maybe not just have a, a, a walking trail through town, but, you know, where you could go on your bike and see different things. Right. We have a six mile bike trip through Old Weathersfield. I already posted on Google. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. And, the Her and the Heritage Way. Yeah, so the Heritage Way is uh, three the popular. I think there's three, right, that we can do, that we could. But we posting posted. those in March might be a good idea to get mm. people's. Uh, You're right, because yeah. we do. We did come up with that page: uh, bike walk, or bike or walk Weathersfield. Yeah. So I could just keep uh, promoting that page. Yeah, and put the QR code. That would be great. Do we have the QR code yet? <laughs> yes, I don't. we did the yeah. QR code. Oh, okay. We haven't done the stickers though. Okay. But those are those are some great suggestions. I think those are great, Judy. With the uh, the walk is one, yeah. Being able to do the the bike routes as well, so that would give you a lot for March. <laughs> yeah, yeah, getting people outside is yeah a good good thing for for upcoming stuff. Yep. Okay. All right. Anything else? Any other business? All right. Then I am going to. Um, accept the motion to adjourn the meeting and thank you everyone for coming a little bit longer than usual, but we had a lot to talk about tonight. So no other business, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. And I have a second from Judy. And with that, everyone have a great night. Thank you, Chris. Bye. Thank you. We'll see you Bye. all soon. Bye. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.